It's time for your daily dose of all things Chicago sports. This is the Daily Score. Now, here's your host, Mark Grody. Bears win. Bears win. Who'd have thunk it? Bears beat Washington by a final score of 40 to 20. A historic night for DJ Moore. He had in this game eight catches, 230 yards, including three touchdowns. He was absolutely terrific. Justin Fields was very good as well. I mean, I'm just sitting here thinking right now about those Justin Fields. Justin Fields had four touchdown passes, by the way. And I'm trying to think in my head, like, which one of those touchdown passes to DJ Moore was my favorite? (laughs) Because they all had their own unbelievable story on the very first drive what made the 21 the the 20 yard touchdown pass to DJ Moore really incredible there is that it was on third and 14 beautiful the bears are now the team that is doing it to the opposition instead of the converse which we know that we've seen and we don't have to digress and talk about that but to have seen that play on third and 14 to eventually make it seven to nothing bears was enlightening the the second TD that's the 11 yard touchdown pass um to DJ Moore obviously that's what we're talking about in the corner of the end zone on a beautiful loft throw by Justin Fields he looked comfortable on it and DJ Moore goes up to get it just a perfect that's what when we talk about chemistry that play is is why we talk about it I think that maybe that was Justin Fields is well I don't know I don't know but it was it was it his best pass of the day I don't know, but it was a beautiful pass, especially considering the circumstance. And then how about the the put-away punch by DJ Moore, the 56-yard catch from Justin Fields to make it 30, eventually make it 37 to 20 Bears. Um and that play with 409 left in the game, it was bang, bang. Kendall Fuller came within an inch of getting to that ball. He sold out for it. He jumped the route and it felt like, oh boy, man, I'm seeing it come together. And it felt to me like this is going to, oh man, here comes that moment, that Justin Fields moment, that only if he hadn't thrown that interception last week, we would have been glowing about Fields all week. Um, And I thought we were pretty fair to him actually last week as well. But that was something um that play I didn't, I, but getting back i just lost my train of thought there but getting back to the concept that i was talking about the the touchdown catch the 56 yarder to him we've seen that go the other way too many times where the interception is made and it's pick six and it's devastating and something colossal has happened and a bears lost but this was a legitimate 40 to 20 win over Washington. And, you know, look, Washington was not a shit team coming in. I mean, they were two and two, having gotten beaten by Philly and Buffalo in the previous weeks pretty badly, but those are good teams. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know what Washington is this year, but you beat a team that had a pretty good defensive line and a pretty good defense in general, and you did what you wanted to do in this game. So huge thumbs up in so many different areas for the Bears. And I think the 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 bigger picture things, well, let's start with this, with Justin Fields now, because for the first time I thought, okay, something happens sometimes in sports and in life, if you would like, things click. Things become more comfortable, whether it's in your job or in their jobs. All of a sudden, it's like, okay, I got this. I got this. I'm feeling it. All the coaching, everything suddenly computes. You hit enter, and boom, it finally actually works instead of frustrating you and you having to fix it again. And that's that's kind of has been the drill with Justin Fields. But these last two weeks, in terms of him passing the football, just the passing portion of it, the, the portion that we have all obsessed over since the end of last year and, and oftentimes during the year last year too. Man, if he would just put the passing together. So his passing in these last two games has just taken a huge jump in terms of touch and accuracy and confidence and everything that you can imagine that Justin Fields did not seem to have previously. Now, 
to answer my own question, like how seriously do we take this? Um, I, I would say it, it'd be foolish to just be after everything that we've all been through with Justin Fields, the good and the bad. It would probably be foolish after two games to just say, yeah, this is the clicking point. <laughs> you know, it's been two really good games, I think, for Justin Fields. But to say, yeah, he's got it after seeing what we have all seen. We've seen it all, right? And I, I've seen uh, more than most of you probably just because of the nature of the job and getting to see every practice and most of what Justin Fields has done since day one of his career with the Bears when we have the access and we have the access. So, um you know, it's it is it still remains to be seen. A little little wait now. The mini buy is here, and one of the things that we are not going to be talking about as much as much um, that I thought for sure there was no way we would be able to avoid this week, and that was Matt Eberflus and his job security. And this was a turnaround game. No, that, the turnaround that's too dramatic. This was a really good game plan in so many different ways for the Bears, from offense to defense and everywhere, um, special teams. Everything looked crisp tonight. So this was a well-coached game. Like, you can say that. It's okay. It's okay to say. We know that Matt Eberflus has had some poorly coached games. So to get a win and say in some parts, a large part, is because of the way the game was coached and the way the game plan was – was put out. So it was a it was enough. Matt Eberflus and his coaching staff did enough to, I think, at least you know, get them, you know, get them off of people's backs as story number one. Um, because it would have been, it would have been. I mean, no, you know, you're not gonna if Justin Fields had played poorly, you're not gonna get rid of him. We would have been talking about the coach. Uh, we would have been talking about the general manager. Um, and all that is still fair. It's all still fair. Trust me. Um, it's there and it'll be discussed. And who knows when I will next be talking about the Bears with you. But I well, probably tomorrow. Um, I, I may bring it up as well. So um, some of the other things, man, it got really thin at running back for the Bears. I mean, God, they have a problem at running back all of a sudden because Roshan Johnson, Khalil Herbert, Travis Homer, um, all hurt in that game. Don't, don't know the, the extent to which, but all hurt. So you had Kari Blassen game, the fullback, who didn't have a touch last year as your primary running back, is the only running back at the end of the game. So that got a little bit sweaty and, and weird for sure. So I'm trying to think of there's a few other things that I wanted to, to talk about from this game. Oh, Big thumbs up to uh, Greg Stroman Jr., not just for the interception in the first, which was massive, but also the sack in the third quarter as Washington was driving. Um, they were starting to gain momentum, and um, I think it might—I think it might have led to the the Comet TD eventually. But it it just kind of put a damper on what it looked like Washington was doing, and that was taking a big bite out of the Bears. Um, 27 to three halftime lead. A couple other things. Um, offensive line, so funny, man. Um, you know, I, I knew Tevin Jenkins was going to be active for this game on uh, Wednesday. Um, or at least I got a really good vibe that he was going to be playing in the game. And so then the question was all right, what happens to Cody White here? What happens to. Uh, Lucas Patrick, you know, the, what, who's where and what. And we pretty much saw everything <laughs> because of we saw Tevin Jenkins rotating um, with Cody Whitehair. We saw Jatari Carter get some time. Nate Davis was there, all good. Um, just about every possibility occurred because, oh, and Cody Whitehair at center because Lucas Patrick got injured. So Eventually, you had Cody Whitehair back at center, Devin Jenkins, <clears throat> excuse me, at left guard, Nate Davis, right guard, Larry Bourne, left tackle, Darnell Wright as the right tackle. But it was very interesting, and somehow, some way, for the most part throughout the night, it, it was very, very well maintained. Um, I will end today's The Daily Score on talking about the great 
Dick Butkus. You know, I did not get to see him play like live, like I wasn't existing at that time. However, uh, look, I feel like we all watched Dick Butkus play because his highlights, the highlight package reel, the, all the plays, you know, all the plays they show. Dick Butkus just destroying people and getting mad and the the cold air coming out of his helmet and just like just reckless abandon of Dick Butkus is everywhere and like is one of the top highlight packages that the NFL has. So I feel like I like you, I did watch him play. And that's the blessed part of this. Um, you know, th- we lost Dick Butkus, dies at the age of 80, but he's one of those guys that we all smile about when we think about because th- he's just awesome, <laughs> you know? And I don't really know him. I interviewed him a couple of times on the Bears sideline, um, but didn't know him, but did, you know, like, you know, for, I interviewed him, you know, for whatever it's worth. So, um, and it, it means that we get to talk about Dick Buckus and it means we get to see those highlights everywhere and we get to hear people talking about how awesome Dick Butkus was, but obviously our thoughts, prayers, and hearts go out to the the family and close friends of Dick Butkus as well. Number 51, one of the, the greatest of all time. So we will, I mean, yeah, it feels good that that was intertwined with, with a uh, Bears win. It's uh, unavoidable to want to think about that and put that together um, a la Brian Robinson years ago. But um uh, we will leave it right there. Uh, hey, this one's for Dick Butkus, and this one's for you too, Bears fans. It's a damn win. Have a great day for Ray Diaz, our executive producer. I am Mark Grody. Thank you so much for always watching and listening to The Daily Score. Thank you.